The Claypool Hotel Murders, also known as the Girl in the Drawer Murders, was actually two separate crimes that occurred 11 years apart at the very high-end luxury hotel in Indianapolis called um, the Claypool uh, Hotel. And um, the two victims were average young women, and uh, we'll get into how they were at this hotel when uh, we discuss each of their murders. The biggest injustice of this case is that the media and the police conspired to um, call these girls prostitutes. And... Um, Unfortunately, because of of this bad reporting, every other story about this uh, two deaths is contaminated. And um, that's a shame because that means these the women. Sorry about that. That means the reputations of these women has been sullied for over 70 years. That's not fair. And I hope that this um, video will help rectify that situation. The first victim was killed in August of 1943. She was a um, corporal in the Women's Army Corps, and her occupation was a physical therapist. Now, uh, as I said, this was the middle of World War II, and uh, my understanding is that the hotel, again, very high-end luxury hotel, would offer uh, service members a... Uh, very heavily discounted uh, rate to stay at the hotel on leave. She was stationed at Camp Atterbury, approximately 40 miles outside of Indianapolis. She was killed by a bottle of whiskey. The uh, police and the media both said that she bought the bottle. I think that is very highly unlikely. Now, picture a young, average girl um, visiting a high-end luxury hotel. You know her eyes were wide open, and she looked like a fish out of water. And um, being in uniform, she was even more easily spotted as somebody who was not among the rich and famous and would not be missed if uh, she ended up dead. Now, I do not think the um, perpetrator um, intended to kill her. I think his intention was rape. And uh, when he attempted to do this, she fought back, and she fought back hard. You'll see what I mean here in a picture I'm going to show here in a minute. Now, the coroner said that uh, she had had sex shortly before her death. Ironically, though, she was found fully clothed. Hmm, something's amiss here. This is the crime scene photo. As you can clearly see, even though there's a small amount of disheval at the edge of the bed, the bed is made, which means she didn't have sex. The um, death of the second victim 
is a tragedy three times over. This young woman was 18 years old. She was in Indianapolis from a small town approximately 100 miles away. She was looking for work. She would had, uh, had already had some job interviews and was scheduled to take the uh, civil service exam. Now, the police did say, honestly, that they thought she was lured to the hotel for a job. Unfortunately, that's about as far as the truth went. Again, the media very subtly called her a prostitute. Now, this young woman, and this is difficult, was um, not only murdered, she was mutilated and stuffed into a drawer. Her body was not found for several days. Only when um, her body started to smell, and this was probably only about a day after she died because the air conditioning had gone out in the building. Being uh, July, and this was in 1954, it would have been hot and steamy in Indianapolis during that time. The police deliberately lied to the public and um, had a sketch made of a subject. And uh, very shortly thereafter, they arrested a man named Victor Lively. They railroaded this man. He was uh, convicted of this young lady's murder. And while I cannot find his sentence... I do know that he was not executed. The um, 